Starting the coffee with the K-Bar chopsticks using the Vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your Bistello coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Salted. We'll get started, but first, Bistello coffee. I dig it. Who knows, maybe in a month I won't like it, but right now I like it. But then again, I've never, well, I, I was going to say never had, a, never met a coffee I didn't like, but when I had a little bit of that cold flu thing going on a couple weeks ago, I had zero desire for coffee, like zero. I don't know why. I had zero desire for coffee and zero desire for puffing on a pipe, which I tried once in the past two weeks and, uh, just wasn't, it, it did nothing for me. So I'm kind of getting back into coffee. You know, it's funny when you're not feeling well, you don't desire, I don't desire coffee. I desire tea. Even the thought of puffing on a pipe just turns me off. It's weird. And I know I'm feeling better when I want coffee, when I want to puff on a pipe, and when I want to go back to the gym. What are what are like your little markers when you are starting to feel well? What are the things that you don't do when you don't feel well, but when you're starting to feel better, what are the things that are coming back into your life? Like the little habits. Put your answers down below. Well, here's 10 truths about life. Number one, everyone you know is going to die, even you. Number two, you are the one that gives your life meaning. If your life sucks, it's your fault. Take responsibility and change it. And if your life doesn't suck, that's your fault. It's the consequences of proper planning. Number three, the perfect partner does not exist. Attract someone with similar values and build because there's joy in building something. Number four, you must find a way to figure out the dance steps or life is going to be hard right up until you die. Number five, everything is finite here on earth. That's why it's valuable. Youth, health, life, it all ends eventually for everybody. Number six, create romance and good feelings about the smallest things and accomplishments. Number seven, have an artist's ambition, but an engineer's mindset. Number eight, figure out a way or don't complain about it. Number nine, make time for the three S's, silence, solitude, and service. And number 10, quietly eliminate negative people. No people is better than negative people. 10 truths about life. Your biggest critics are those with no content or ideas of their own. Active, legit content creators don't have time or desire to cheap shot anybody. Create your own material, even if it's just a little bit. So I get this message. Gentleman said, I flirt with suicide, sometimes very seriously. I have come to a point in my life where I've realized that while there is a risk of me going through with it, I don't actually want to. So when I have those feelings, I have, to remember, I have to remember that I'm dramatic and that this feeling will pass. And eventually, the situation making me feel this way will pass. Just thinking like that causes the feeling to pass much quicker than it used to. I have found that playing one of your videos also helps me to snap out of that mindset. So thank you for your channel. If I had found your channel a year ago, it might have helped save my marriage. It may still, but more importantly, it's helping me get through this shit. That is a great 
message there. My response is that sanity, clarity, and reason usually help a person snap out of it. Snap out of it. Yeah. <sighs> I, w I was thinking, if I found my channel 20 years ago, I might have saved my marriage. But I didn't have a channel 20 years ago, and I don't think YouTube existed 20 years ago. I don't believe it did, right? My thoughts are this. Is that I am not a guru sitting on top of a mountain with all the answers. I encounter answers and meaning in my journey in life, and I just share it with you. Some of those things, some of those answers, I literally have turned into principles that I teach, either here or in my coaching. So it's not necessarily theory. There is some theory that I talk about, but a lot of what I teach is the result of things that I've experienced. Some good things, some bad things. Most of the bad things that happened to me, I created myself. I created situations that created bad times. Times when I was indecisive, times when I was weak. And that has become less and less as I've gotten older. Imagine me now in my 60s saying that as I get older. Everybody is a teacher and everybody is a student. Embrace that. Now here you go again. You say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? It's only right that you should play the way you feel it. But listen carefully to the sound of your loneliness, like a heartbeat drives you mad, in the stillness of remembering what you had and what you lost. Stevie Nicks, 1975. The song is Dreams. Classic, isn't it? You can tell a lot about a woman by her hands. If they are placed around your throat, she's probably slightly upset. I forget which comedian said that, but I always got a kick out of that line. I always thought the George Costanza character was a, was a great character. One of the favorite lines from that show is, George says, she hates me, I like that in a woman. Doesn't, isn't that really the essence of some men? It's like that's what they are attracted to, or that's what they attract, is people that treat them like shit. Like, rather than just like, all right, rather than blaming it on women, let me ask you this. Is there a possibility that you're attracting people that treat you like crap? Is that a possibility? There was a certain point in my life, literally, it's almost like night and day. If I look at my life as a timeline, there's a time when I literally started attracting a different kind of woman. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about a woman with a different nature. Female nature is what it is. And I've come to realize that. But I'm talking about uh, character and values, not nature. There's nothing you're going to do about... Gentlemen, there's nothing you're going to do about female nature. It is what it is across the board, throughout history, no matter what the culture is. But there's something you can do about a woman's character and values, the type of women that you attract. Rather than just saying, ah, there's no good women out there, how about you change yourself by creating excellence in your life and then the losers eliminate themselves. Creating excellence in your life, starting with your body, starting with your diet, starting with what you put into your head, starting with your friends or friendly acquaintances,
eliminating even the possibility of letdowns and disappointments in your life. And guess what? You become happy on your own. And nobody can wreck your groove. Nobody. There's a scripture that says, above, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Be careful of what you set your heart, your heart's desire for. Be careful. If you adjust your desires to want to please the Lord, if you adjust your desires to want to serve people and make sure some of those people are those that don't deserve it, that's kind of transformative. It's easy to love lovable people, isn't it? It's pretty tough to love unlovable people. You can create a whole new life for yourself by working on you. Not necessarily building a wall around yourself. You don't want to do that. You want to have that semi-permeable heart. You don't want you don't want to leave all the doors unlocked. Let me put it that way to your heart. The semi-permeable means that you can give love but you're also able to receive love as well. And you're selective with what you let into your life. The phrase, heavens to Betsy, first appeared in 1857 in an American journal. Some say it was a wholesome replacement to the popular phrase, well, hell's bells. It started fading in the latter 20th century. It's a phrase of mild surprise or astonishment. Other popular phrases from the mid to late 19th century. I'm kind of obsessed with 19th century stuff, if you haven't guessed. Other popular phrases from the mid to late 19th century were Sweet Fanny Adams or Kiss Me Hardy. I kind of like the Sweet Fanny Adams. I think that's funny. Imagine like if you're surprised at something in the 19th century somebody gives you a gift and as you're opening it up you're like sweet Fanny Adams I say make that phrase great again my oh my you sure know how to arrange things you set it up so well so carefully ain't it funny how your new life didn't change things you're still the same old girl you used to be that was from the Eagles 1975 man there was some good music back then good songwriting some. I love this phrase from St. Francis de Sales. This was from the media publication called The Catholic Gentleman. Never be in a hurry. Do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems upset. It just reminds me of that picture of that dude sitting in a flood smoking a pipe, that meme. Like his whole world is falling apart. And he's just sitting there smoking a pipe. Or how about the one <laughs> there was a dude like sitting in the waves, the waves are up to here, like in the ocean, and he's drinking. And the meme says, I have no idea what's going on here, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with a woman. That's pretty funny. I just want to let you know that I was opening doors with my shirt sleeves. Like yesterday, I'm going into Wawa, opening it up with my shirt sleeve. Uh, opening doors with my elbows and pushing elevator buttons with my knuckles long before any pan dem ick showed up. No one, no one had to school me on washing my hands after touching doorknobs. I mean, doorknobs and door handles always skeeved me out. 
since I was a kid anyways. I mean, if you just think about it, doorknobs, door handles, elevator buttons, they're gross. You know, just, I'm not an obsessive hand washer, but I'm quite aware that stuff that like thousands of people touch and then that you touch and then rub your eyes, touch your nose or start eating without washing your hands. You just kind of like put two and two together. You know, there's things you can do to bring crap into your life. And then, I mean, eat, seriously, I'm thinking about even before there was like running water, did people wash their hands? You know, they, they might have actually taken dirt and rubbed dirt in their hands. I read that once, that some cultures use dirt. Dirt isn't as dirty as you think. Isn't that a trip, if you think about it? Dirt isn't as dirty as you think. Anyone familiar with LeBarn James? I can't stop laughing. I found LeBarn James on YouTube. Uh, funny, wholesome content, but just the name LeBarn James is pretty darn funny. I got some good laughs from him yesterday. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. What is the role of women? And... What, do you think? <laughs> what is the role well, of, or of a woman? Well, to, you know, obviously, if you, if uh, for women to be a wife, um, a mother, but also to be like this calming force to calm things down, uh, not not to escalate, but to just to do the opposite, 